And what's up, everybody? Welcome to the next episode of the Frisco Report. What's going on, bro? How you been? How you feeling? What's been going on? Everything's good on this end. Knock on wood. Staying safe. Uh, staying home. And that kind of thing. So what, what about you? How's everything going over there? Everything's great, dude. No uh, positive cases in my county. Um, the, the closest one is about 50 miles away, and the other one's about 70 miles away. But nothing in my county, as long as we stay uh, quarantined and stay at home, I think I think you, I think, Joe, we should be fine. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's just keep washing our hands, and everybody keep doing the social distancing, and uh, we'll get through these next couple of weeks. All right, everybody, but... Right now, we're talking Cowboys. We've got a lot of good uh, discussion here for you guys. We're going to talk about, you know, some news of the day that's come out, uh, playoffs. Uh, we're going to talk about Cowboys draft, NFL free agency for Cowboys. Looks like that's winding down. So let's get right into it, Mike. Free agency, we got, I mean, we're already, uh, you know, this is the bargain bin week, week three. Pretty quiet. I mean, they, I mean, the last move I think we've done was, was the kicker, Greg Zerline. So now we have two kickers, Kai Forbath, Cobra Kai, and Greg Zerline. So, you know, we'll see what else, if they do anything else here in the next couple of days. But uh, they might be done. I don't know. What's your, what's your thoughts on uh, where we stand right now with the Cowboys roster? You know, it's crazy. You say Cowboy, the free agency is in the third week. And there's really nothing coming out of the Cowboys front office. The past nine years, this is where the Cowboys have been active. Um, Cowboys really dipped in that second wave of free agency, Joe. And uh, and it was good to see. I mean, they, they made some real um, positive bodies for the roster. A lot on defense. I mean, uh, a, a, a lot on defense. Um, you talk about uh, Poe. Ha uh, Clinton Dix, Maurice Kennedy, Gerald McCoy. Uh, you know, they signed a couple of their own guys, but from the outside for agents coming in, I think they, I, I think you kind of see that Mike McCarthy S on this free agency. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I think, you know, you're right there because they, uh, definitely you, you can tell that they have that, uh, they have that cohesion now, you know, um, new, new coach, but you still have the same, uh, front office guys, you know, Will McClay. So it looks like Will McClay worked good here in concert with, with Will, uh, you know, with, uh, McCarthy. They, they wanted more beef. They got it. We got the Baconators. Um, they're not the end all be all by any means guys. Um, just because we added McCoy and, uh, Poe doesn't mean that we're not going to add more of you the draft. So, uh, Right, you know, so there. That's that, and um, but you see some of these other players, and it's it's more of the same from the front office. But they are working with McCarthy on on what he wants. That's that's good news, and that's good news for the draft. So, what do you think about the kicker, though? You know, we did have four baths. He did a pretty good job, I thought. You know, for uh, for the Cowboys when he came on, and then they come in here and, and bring Zerline in, kind of a surprise. What, what's your thoughts on? Uh, Having two kickers now. Yeah, Kai Forbath. Oh, he signed a one-year deal on March 18th, and like as you just said, on March 27th, uh, nine days later, they signed Greg Zerline on a three-year contract, Joe. And you know, you look at Fossil Bones. Fossil. Uh, this was his guy for a long time with the Rams. No surprise here. Um, and there was talks that, um, you know, that the, they were debating on whether and having Zerline or Kai Forbath and they got both and one thing that we haven't seen in a long time is kicker competition Joe yeah there's been kicker competition you look at Dan Bailey and Brett Maher but Dan Bailey never really had competition anyway because he was good but this is good that okay Kai Forbath you came in here you were 10 for 10 uh Bones is like I know what Zerline can do that he could throw, he could fake punt, he could throw footballs, he can run, etc. But one thing that concerns me, Joe, when it comes to Zerline, is he was second only behind Brett Maher, who was first in the National Football League for missed field goals. Go ahead and repeat that stat again, Mike, so we can, I know, uh, you know, digest what you just said there. Say that again. 
Greg Zerline was second, only behind Brett Maher, who was first in the NFL for missed field goals. Okay, yeah. So in case you didn't hear the first time, there it is the second time. That's not a good uh, stat line. So, yeah, definitely it is good that they have the competition. Hopefully Coach Fossil, you know, um, considers his competition open and not, you know, more biased towards his former kicker. That's, you know, Maher was garbage. <laughs> and it was more of uh, Jason Garrett. And, you know, we don't know if it was Jason Garrett in, in the front office, but they had a hard time letting go of garbage players, man. I mean, it was one of Garrett's hallmarks, you know, whether whether it was uh, Chaz Green holding on to this guy for years when he was a total bust, Maher when he got the yips. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, man. We'll see if that, uh, if that philosophy has changed here now that you got, uh, you know, McCarthy in here. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Joe, isn't under the new CBA agreement the team's allowed to keep 55 instead of 53, right? Yeah, you're getting more on the on the roster, and I think also the practice okay. squad, I, be, I believe. I mean, wh- and then, you know, I I go back. The, what do the Cowboys have? They had a punter. They had, uh, they had Dan Bailey, and they had uh, number 18. And all he did was kickoff. So maybe, just maybe, Kai Forbath would just be your field goal guy. Zerline would be your kickoff guy. And obviously you got Chris Puntisher just doing punts. I mean, can you see something like that happening? I would hate that. I would hate that with the passion. When the Cowboys did do that, I hated that. You, I mean, you you need you need better players. And, you know, the season, the way you, your, your players get beat up, you have to call up players. You know, you, I, I would hate to do that. I'd rather have the, those... Uh, roster spots for rotational people on defense um offensive line you're always going to need that and uh you know if you if you need another spare uh specialty player you know but a, a kicker nah nah it's not, even with the extra roster spots I, I, I would i would hate that i really would not care for that at all i no i don't disagree with you um, you know, like you said, you, you got to use that uh, that roster spot for something like that. Rotational players, you know, if someone like Luke Gifford stood out or something, you know, put put that player there. And then when he gets his chance, go you know, see what he can do, especially in week 17 when you already got a bye week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you it gives you a lot more wiggle room now where you don't have to really have sacrificial lambs where, OK, somebody suspended. When he comes back, we have to cut somebody. Now you can, I mean, you still probably will need a sacrificial lamb, but it's going to be like you're really, really low, barely on the roster type of player. So not like it is now where, you know, if you get a Randy Gregory back, who are you letting go? Is it going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to worry mm-hmm. so much that, that you're going to have to let go of, you know, uh, I don't know, just pick a player. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to be so... Uh, so burdensome when a player comes back from injury or suspension or, or things like that. So it's a good move for the NFL, for the Dallas Cowboys, and for the players. You know, they'll, they'll get the opportunity to, to show what they have, you know. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I don't disagree. But, you know, it's just crazy how, you know, that Will McClay, Mike McCarthy, Mike Nolan, Kellen Moore, Bones, Fossil are, are, are coming together and, and dipping in former Cowboys and free agents from other teams. It, it, it's awesome to see. It really is. It really is. But it looks like, you know, here we are. We're about to be midway through this week, tomorrow, you know, Wednesday. So it, um, it doesn't look like they're, uh, they're going to be adding any other players. I mean, not to say that they won't, obviously, but... Um, the way you look at this roster, Mike, how do you feel that you're you're? Where, how do you feel that number seventeen pick is shaping up now? Because you kind of you feel, you know, your defensive line. You got some players here. You did you you lost your cornerback, defensive end. You know, maybe there's a question mark there. Your slot receiver. So, you know, the you're getting a little bit more of the focus here as to what number seventeen might be allocated to. What what is your gut instinct as we as we head here into this 
third week of free agency. Like I said last week, Joe, you got to look at the contracts. How do they build contracts? Uh, Poe, uh, he got a, a two-year deal. Gerald McCoy got a three-year deal. They picked up Antoine Woods. You still got Tristan Hill. So they, could, they took care of that D-line just in case something falls through for them at that defensive line position. The, Tyron Crawford's still a cowboy. They can cut him right now and, and save $8 million on the cap, and they haven't done it yet. Um, mm-hmm. So Tyron, Tyron Crawford looks like he's a cowboy. So they're, I think they took care of the defensive line with Poe and McCoy, right? And if you look at the cornerbacks, uh, Maurice Kennedy, a one-year deal. And then you look and see uh, uh, who, who they signed after that uh, of their own players. And uh, Anthony Brown got a three-year deal. Um C.J. Goodwin, who's really special teams, got a one-year deal. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Darian Thompson, the safety, one-year deal. Um, they didn't even try to touch Kayvon Frazier, which I don't blame him. But that back end, Joe, and HaHa Clinton Dix, that was a one-year deal. So you, you look at that, it's something they're going to be on the back end, Joe. But I think the strategy here, they solidified that defensive line kept that thing intact with contracts, not just contracts, but with multiple year contracts, just in case something falls through on that defensive line. Joe, I'm telling you, I think the draft strategy here, they're going quarter or safety. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel that it's, I definitely feel corner is high on the list. Um, And then for me, it's going to be, you know, cornerback, defensive end, safety, I think is is my third one. Because I feel like, I, f- I feel like, you know, they're going to give Clinton Dix a, a look-see, see how he looks. But uh, it could be like like we talked about a few weeks ago. Some of these players come in here to revive their career, become unaffordable the following year. You know, kind of like a Robert Quinn. You know, he, he, he bet on himself, and he, he did good. So it could be the same situation for Clinton Dix. So that puts us in a bind for the following season. Well, we're mm-hmm. looking at safety being an issue yet again. You know, and fans have been asking for safety since the dawn of time. <laughs> I mean, it, it seems to <laughs> it seems to be ever since. Honestly, it's been ever since. You know, we cut Roy Williams, the safety Roy Williams. I mean, not after that. Just it's been a whole. Uh, it's just been a whole bunch of guys in musical chairs there at safety position. You know, um, exactly. And then not very good players. I mean, they're okay. They're adequate. But I mean, the one thing we've been saying this whole draft process and offseason, if you can get better, get better. So, yeah, man, I feel I feel the back end is is high on the list. Definitely, Mike. I totally agree. You know, cornerback safety. And um, I like defensive end as well. You know, I, 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 don't, well, I don't like Crawford so much. I just too banged up. The question mark on Gregory. We know he's applying for reinstatement. You got Dorrance there, so I feel like you got well, a Joe? body there. So if there's a if there's a premier player there at defensive end, you may have to pull the trigger there as well. So, mm-hmm. but if you look out the way the contracts are set up, Joe, I agree with you. If, if, if it's there, pull the trigger on defensive end. But you know it. it their free agency tracker is screaming, I need safety, I need corner, I, I probably need both. But if you look at the linebacker contracts, everybody got one year's deals. Sean Lee, Justin March, Joe Thomas, all one year. I wouldn't be surprised if it's cornerback or safety in the first round and a linebacker in the second. Now, let me, let me throw this at you because I know some fans would absolutely hate this. Would you be surprised, you know, everybody's talking about I mean, literally, everybody's talking about cornerback. C.J. Henderson's the hottest name right now. Cornerback, cornerback, cornerback. You got some people talking safety. Caleb on Chase on is another per- person a lot of people are talking about. What if the Cowboys come out of this with a linebacker like a Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma? Would that shock you? Would it piss you off? How, how would you feel about a pick like that? Absolutely not. If we can get better at the linebacker position, and especially if we might implement a 3-4 defense, Joe, if they want to go linebacker and there's a possibility later on in the season we're switching to a 3-4, I'm all for it. Linebackers are the core of a 3-4. And if there if there's a good linebacker there in the first round and that's their defense philosophy, they got to do it. I think they're 
I think what really helps the Cowboys here to transition to a 3-4, you know, in, you know, and it's it's still maybe not really a full-time 3-4. It might be something that they just give a look, you know. But I think if they give some looks of a 3-4, I think these coaches are really going to love what Jalen Smith can bring to the table. You know, 3-4, coming out of college, um, played really good linebacker, Butkus Award winner, the whole nine. Just a high-end linebacker who can pass rush the quarterback as well. He's got a lot of sacks for for just being that position that he plays. You know, you really don't get many sack production out of, you know, the position that he plays in the 4-3. But as the speed, you know, they do a 3-4, he can be one of those outside linebackers. I, I just, I have a hard time seeing the Marcus Lawrence as a stand-up outside linebacker. So... Not to say that he couldn't do it, but I think he's just, he's kind of big. He's know? a natural end. Yeah, yeah, he's a natural end. Right, yeah, I feel like he would be an end in a 3-4, which would really negate what you're paying him for. So, I'm pretty sure they'll mix it up, which is going to be fun. I think the defense is going to keep the offense guessing. and Like, well, we're going to give him this kind of look, and we'll give him this other kind of look. Go nickel, go 3-4, uh, or even a base four three so it's gonna be badass dude I, I really can't wait to see what they do and uh, they definitely got beefier in the middle we'll see if they can get Tristan Hill going in year two we I hope so I hope so if, if he can make a leap if the coaches can get something out of him Tom Sula it's gonna be good man it's gonna be good you know absolutely and I would be surprised Rod Marinelli took a lot of his, a lot of his guys, right? Uh, Jeff Heath, yeah, Malik Collins. Yep. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys, Stephen Jones, calls up Rod Marinelli and those Las Vegas Raiders and said, "Hey, take take Tristan Hill off our hands, and if you're desperate enough, give us a third. You never know what could happen. He was a second round pick. That'd be the ultimate eye poking. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that, but." Yeah, man. Um, it's it, it's a, a relatively deep draft at defensive tackle too. So, you know, like and like like we're, like you and I are saying, you know, follow the the uh, the, the, the contract. So that's a really big telltale sign of um, of what they're doing. You know, so good stuff right there, Mike. Now let's let's transition over here to um, let's transition over here to. The latest news, man. Yeah, we got the uh, the news here. The the meeting that was supposed to happen in Florida, obviously that was canceled on site. They went virtual press conference over the phone. I think they did a Zoom call or, or something like that. But the NFL approved expanding the playoffs, right? So this will begin in 2021. It, it won't be this season. It'll be 2021 when this starts. What's your thoughts on this, Mike? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think? Mixed emotions right now. Um, just for the simple fact that, what it was, six teams on each side, you know, AFC, NFC went. To add the second one and to pull the bye week from your second seed, I don't know if it's, it's, it's probably going to make that one to two seed race more competitive because teams are going to want that bye week. And, um, you know, money and ratings is what this is all about. And if you're, if you're going to make your ones and your twos be more competitive on to get that one seed, then, uh, you know, it's, it's going to bring in some revenue. People are going to tune in because getting that one seed is a bigger deal than getting that one and the second seed. Um, there was one man standing for a bye week, Joe. Um, having said that, you know, uh, you know your seventh seed is going to be playing – your second seed and that, that team could be seven and nine and the, 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 the second seed could be, uh, you know, 14 and six or whatever the, the UFL games are going to be. If they're even going to expand that next year. Right. So mm -hmm. if a seven and nine team beats, you know, the, a 14 win team, it, it's, I, I don't know if that's good or bad for business. Yeah. You believe in the underdog Joe, but there's a limit to the underdog. There's teams that deserve to be in the playoffs because what they've done. A seven and nine team, if if it ever got that way, 
does not need to be in the playoffs. Or an eight and eight team for that for that matter also. Even if even if it's the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, it's uh this is definitely uh revenue based for sure. You know, they they see the numbers trending upwards, a lot more fans watching the games, you know, spending money on uh you know, all of their uh you know, packages they have for fans, you know, whether it's uh you know the the all access the the all twenty two film you know that kind of the game pass I mean the NFL is a is a money machine big time they're they're I mean they know what they're doing so they look at the numbers they look at the the metrics and the metrics say this is where we're going we can make more money all right so that's what that's what's really driving this thing is is the whole money thing in the networks you know so. How do I feel about it? I, I um I actually like it. You know, I, I like to see I like to see which of these coaches, which of these teams come prepared, you know. Maybe a seven and nine team does get in at some point. I'm pretty sure it'll happen, just the odds of it, you know, or eight and eight team. And we've seen it before. The best team that is more prepared will win it. You know, and if you get a team that's that, you know, thinks they're the, you know, the best, you know, you know, talking a lot of mess and they get hit in the mouth by another team that's hungrier, more prepared. I'm all for it. You know, let's let's see how how far they can take it, you know, and um, whereas the Cowboys or not. I just I like the whole thing of, of being prepared with these coaches. I, I, I admire a lot of these coaches around the league, you know, just, you know, like a Bill Belichick, you know, or a Sean Payton, these kinds of coaches, because you really when the playoffs come, that's when you really see the best. The best of the best that come to play, you know. And you could you could have that run. You know, the Giants, they did it that one year. And uh, we've seen it, you know, several times over the years. You know, some of these lower seat teams, they they make that run. It's, it's all about who gets hot at the right time. Absolutely. And you talk about the money aspect of it, Joe. Let me just break some numbers down for you. Let me give you some facts real quick. Uh, CBA negotiations during that time, the NFL and the NFL PA Joe projected a total of $150 million in new annual revenues from broadcast rights and stadium revenue. Um, on top of that, players are going to get paid two ways. Okay. The f- first way that $150 million will be applied to the revenue calculation that determines the salary cap. Okay. The CBA in 2020, players will get 47% divided out in such revenue. The second way, Joe, is how they do it. Uh, Two more rosters of players will receive playoff shares. Okay, so in in 2020, the wild card winning share uh, equates to $33,000 per player and $30,000 for the losing player in the wild card games. Yeah, that that's what it is, everybody. It's Denzel Washington from Training Day. Boom. All right, that, that's it right there, man. Follow the money. Follow the money. <laughs> Follow the money. That's it. Yeah, man. So the other the other news that came out, Mike, this week, or it might have been over the weekend, or but it just came out recently that Roger Goodell sent out a memo that the draft is a go. You know, there was there was a rumor, we covered it as well, that, that possibly it would get delayed. We were kind of dreading that, but the, the commissioner came out, nipped that rumor in the bud, said no. Um, NFL owners, the draft is a go. It's on schedule. So my, my question to you, Mike, is how do you feel about this? Are you ready for a new type of presentation? We're talking probably, uh, you know, everything being streamed you know they are going to invite the prospects to to the online version of this so that's going to be interesting what, what's your thoughts on on how this is going to work out mike well i want to talk about the history of roger goodell the commissioner of the national football league if you criticize roger goodell let's go back to when zeke elliott got suspended for six games for something by law he didn't even do 
Jerry Jones went to war with Roger Goodell. Lawyers got involved. Jerry Jones had to pay the NFL over $10 million because Jerry Jones was sticking up for his player. And in this memo, Joe, Goodell served warnings to those around the league who criticize the league's substance for continuing this draft. So no matter what NFL owners do or say, it's all about what Roger Goodell does, say, thinks. It's a dictatorship in the National Football League until Roger Goodell gets out of office, all right? Um, Yeah, he is a dictator, man. (laughs) No doubt about that. So, I mean, even if an owner don't like it, he can't even publicly speak on it. Now, there was owners that were hinting that they don't like it, but they can't come out and say this is wrong, right? So, having said all that, the NFL draft taking the internet by storm and you're going to be able to stream it and broadcast it, whatever the case might be. It's, it's, it's a trial. It, this is probably the only year, unless there's another pen, excuse me, unless there's another pandemic that comes around, but it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, create that fan experience, so to speak. It's, it might be a little boring, a little bonky, you know, diehard fans that are very invested like us, you know, we'll enjoy it either way, but it's just for one year. Yeah, that, that's that's what it is, and and the thing about it too, Mike, is that uh, you know with this whole pandemic, you know there's there's really no sports going on right now. Everything got shut down, you know, rightfully so, obviously for the the outbreak, but fans are clamoring for something, man. It's almost like crack addicts. Like I gotta have something. I gotta I gotta have some kind of sports. I'm going crazy here. So this draft. It's it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes. I, I think you you always talk about there's this is gonna break the internet. You know this. There's gonna be a lot of people at home watching this. Will it in Absolutely. fact break the internet? Oh, I'm interested to see how this goes. So you know, um, well, it, it kind of changes that. your draft strategy though, Joe, because you know in this current environment that we're in, with the off season activities canceled team facilities closed there won't be enough time for players physicals psychological testing uh really not enough verified information to go around for the league to pick their players yeah no that that that's true that's true and the nfl did come out with some some rules here as far as facetime visiting you know um i think they're limited to like what is it like 30 minutes or maybe an hour at max, but only a few times during the week per prospect. So it's, uh, yeah, man, there's only so much you can do over FaceTime. You know, you gotta, you gotta see the body language, you know? Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, they're really, like we said before, they're really going to be relying on, on the, uh, the scouts, Will McClay. This is their time to shine, man. This is their time to shine. So, It'll be interesting to see how this shapes up for the Cowboys. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. So the rules are teams can talk with the prospect by phone or computer up to three times per week, Sunday through Saturday, so pretty much all week, for a maximum of one hour per session. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are no limits to the number of times uh, a particular prospect can be contacted through April 22nd, uh, the day before the draft. Within, uh, within the rules of three times per week and one hour per session. And there is uh, um, no limits on the number of total prospects to whom teams can speak with. So, you know, the 30-man visit, it's unlimited FaceTime visits. No limit soldier. That's interesting. That's interesting. But... Uh... Yeah, it's just crazy how this this virus has just really just affected everything that we know. You know, everything has changed and may be changed forever. Now, you know, speaking about this, Mike, the season, all right, you know, because you do have to talk about this. This is a conversation that some people aren't talking about. I don't know if it's denial or they're not looking ahead, but we're talking about this virus, hopefully, you know, Coming down on, on this next two weeks, you know, presidents come out this week saying that next two weeks are going to be very uh, stressful, painful for the nation. So 
hopefully we're able to get over these next two weeks and maybe we'll be on the downside of that curve that they're, they always talk about. But, mm-hmm. but this is this is the big thing that, that we need to keep in mind. It's possible that this could be a seasonal thing. It could come back in the fall, right when football season starts. So I really, really hope that there's some sort of way to treat this or maybe a miraculous vaccine comes out way ahead of time because you know not to be a Debbie Downer or anything but you know if this comes back this then the NFL season could be derailed like the NBA has you know you start your season it just takes one person to get infected and that's it that's game over so it's uh (laughs) it's kind of a scary thing man Not, not, not to laugh or anything but it's it's more of a could this be a here we go again type scenario? What, what's your thoughts on on that, Mike? Well, let's look at the cases. The United States has 188,633 confirmed cases. Um, and, you know, you look at the population of 350 million United States citizens. I mean, as long as we do what we're supposed to do and we stay home, I don't know how many times people got to hear that. Stay home. If you're not an essential <coughs> employee, stay home. If you are an essential employee, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Hand sanitize when you're dealing with public. Um, first of all, thank you to all the doctors, nurses, uh, essential employees that are out there on the front line risking their lives and their families' lives. Um, but you got to be responsible. And in order to stop what Joe just said and coming back in the fall, you have to be responsible. Don't go to the parks. I read somewhere that Fort Worth, Texas was taking down basketball goals at parks because people don't understand the definition of social distancing. Yeah. If you're playing basketball, it's not social distancing. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to be smart, guys. You got to wash your hands. You can't touch your face. You, you got to stay home. You know, be quarantined if you, if you have it. If you think you have it, quarantine yourself. Be smart for you and your family and the public around you. And... And that, I mean, that, I mean, how many times have we heard that since this thing's happened and people still ain't doing it? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, and that's that's what it is, man. It's a, uh, it, it really, you know, it's it's a new age, you know. Well, how how are the players going to be as far as in shape? You know, there's no OTAs, there's no mini camps, as as far as we know, not yet. I mean, I think I feel good that if we do, in fact you know, blunt the curve and we're on the downside of this thing, I feel like, you know, we, we might be able to see mini camp. The training camp might be limited, though. I I think you, you you have to scale things back significantly. I don't, I don't think you can be like, okay, <laughs> you know, we're we're seeing less and less case. Let's open up. Let's open the floodgates. Let's, you know what I mean? As much as people are going to want to get back to normal, I think we got to stagger things out. So, uh, mini camp, hopefully they'll be able to do that because, you know, what are, what are the sh- what shape are these guys in right now? The, I'm assuming these guys are are working out in their home gyms and and things like that, you know. So there's always that, yeah. there's always that concern, you know. Of, is he gonna show up fat? You know, there's always that, and he never does. He always shows up pretty cut. Yeah, but that'll come up again. <laughs> that always comes up with Zeke. Um, these guys, uh, I think they're pretty well prepared by now, you know, but I think at the same time, we got to not be too naive about it. You know, they're, they're kind of left to their own, their own uh, devices. So hopefully these guys will be in shape and uh, be ready to go. You, you would hope so. Um, you know, it's crazy how they're doing the physicals. Like they got to get to a, their, one of their local hospitals. Um, they have to pay a doctor. To get physicals. I mean, Gerald McCoy just passed his physical two days ago. So technically, Gerald McCoy signed his contract two days ago because it was pending physical. Same with uh, Poe and, and these other guys. But yeah, you know, there, there's ways to stay in shape, um, and there's and there's ways of social distancing also, um, and that's for everybody, not just the NFL players. But like you said, don't be naive about it. There, there, there's a lot of NFL players that love candy. <laughs> and the Cowboys locker room's full of Dak, Zeke. Um, there's a lot of people, you know. Yeah. And you know, it, it's hard. It's it's a comfort food. So when you're just trapped in your house all day, especially in Dallas, Fort Worth area, down in the Houston area, you know, it, it, it 
it, it's crazy. And, you know, sometimes you need that home comfort food and home comfort food is sweets. So, but I hope these guys are responsible. They know that the NFL season's coming up. They get in shape as best as they can. And uh, hopefully when the, the, the fields open back up, they can pass a physical. They, they can pass a strength and conditioning test. And they can go get to work. Yeah, well said, Mike. Well said. That's, that's exactly what it is, man. Just take care of business, baby. Take care of business. Well, Mike, I think um, I think that's a good podcast here. We hit up on all the hot topics of the week of the day so far. You know, um, it's coming fast, man. Let's let's get through these two weeks. You know, hopefully everybody stays safe here in these these next two weeks. That you know they're. That's what their projections are talking about. So let's let's get to this, man. Everybody can do it, man. Absolutely. Everybody can do it. So chill out. Netflix and chill. Quarantine, chill. Do it. Um, cook food in your house. You know, try not to. Oh, yeah. Try not to even get to go food. You just, you just never know. Just, you know, let's get it done, guys. We can all do it, man. It's uh, It's been a great podcast, Mike. I appreciate you uh, as usual, man. Let me let these guys know where they can find you. Hey, before I let them know where I can find uh, where they can find me, put in a co- put in the comment section, guys, uh, whatever platform you're on right now, uh, so I can read them. I want to know what pranks you're going to do tomorrow for April Fools. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. put it put in the comment section, guys. I might steal some of them. Who knows? I might upload some to my YouTube channel. Who knows? But where you can find me is, but make sure you drop those comments. I want to know some of the pranks you guys are doing for April Fools. Dallas Cowboy for Football News on YouTube. Dallas Cowboy Football News on Facebook, DCF News 1 on Twitter, guys. And you already know, give me a mention, give me a DM, give me a follow. I'll follow you back. That's where the conversation starts. Thanks, Joe. There we go. That's Mike, Dallas Cowboy Football News. Make sure you guys visit um, our website, thefriscoreport.com. That's really the the uh, central location to find all of our podcasts. You know, you can stream them there. Thefriscoreport.com. I've been making edits there. Um, we have, uh, you know, all the Cowboys draft classes are listed there, um, and things like that. Uh, links to, to the uh, the new merch shop is on there. And also make sure you follow us, follow the podcast on Twitter at the Frisco Report. All right, guys, we really do appreciate it. Uh, if you want to hit me up as well, Cowboys Blog on YouTube, Cowboys Blog Net on Instagram and Twitter, guys. And uh, hit me up. Let's get this thing going. Let's talk some Cowboys football. It's always a great conversation during the offseason, NFL draft, and everything in between and, and, and extra. So that's it, guys. We'll catch you for the next podcast, guys. Peace. Peace.